Right, so the tools that we're going to need, nothing too fancy. A flat-ended sort of punch with a rounded corner so that there's no sharp edges on there. That's for sort of sculpting. A thin chisel. Doesn't have to be a thin chisel, but a ch chisel. A round-ended punch for the eyes. And this I made specifically for this job. It's a tiny little chisel made out of a bit of spring steel. I made that, that for doing the teeth. And finally, a good old centre punch. The optional tool, which I'm going to use, is the guillotine tool with the rounded dies in. But if you haven't got one of these, don't panic. You can do it with um, a couple of bits or a bit of round just bent in half, welded to a poster in your uh, hardy hole as a sort of a spring fuller. A bit of three quarter square, and a bend about an inch, inch and a quarter down over the anvil, down at 90. And then we're going to bend it back down on itself. If you're a farrier, you, it's a bit like making a corking. And then you mess it up and fold it back in on itself. So punch it down and then back in. You want to sort of roll it round. And that's going to form the back of the skull. I must thank Thack Ironworks for this tutorial. I watched one he did. And it was really useful. If you haven't discovered him yet, I'll put a link to his channel in the description because he's got some really interesting stuff on his his channel. He's a really clever bloke. So pop over and have a look. And that's the sort of thing we're looking for. You can see it sort of rolled nicely back into itself. And then you can start rounding it off. Take all those corners off all the edges, push it around you get the idea. So I'm just going to have another heat, do the same again just keep rounding it off a bit all the time sort of pushing it back into itself try and get rid of the, the, uh, the join it almost flows into itself. Tuck those corners in to keep it moving. Don't get any flat spots. And there you go, that's the sort of thing we're looking for. That's the back of the skull. There you go. So next job, we're going to cut in the cheeks, or not the cheeks, the sort of, yeah, I suppose it is where the cheeks are going to be. This is where I'm going to use the guillotine tool. And I'm going to cut it in literally at the base of the skull. Now I do make a bit of a ricket here. I actually go too far. That would probably be ample but this is only the second one I've ever made the first one came out well just by pure luck now that's gone a little bit too far and then I'm going to go and do it even more so it doesn't need to be that far it really is a little bit too far now I'm going to flatten this out but I'm going to use my fuller um, not my fuller, my flatter because when I did the first one I ended up hitting the, the skull when I was trying to do it with a hammer I made a few nasty dents in the skull so I'm just going to try it with the flatter this time these things you, you learn as you go along when you're making these things you, know, you start with the first one and think I could have done something different there and something better there and you adapt as you go Just about it. So it's a little bit narrow. 
keep it all square try and keep the head in line Just about it, I think. So what I'm going to do next, get another heat and just round off all the corners, just where the sort of the jaw is going to be. So all this front here, just round it off. Not massively, but just so it's not quite so square as it was. Just try and keep it all in line. Knock that head down a bit. This is, I think, is going to turn out like my first one. It's going to have a great big head on it. Look a bit like an alien. I think I probably could have got away with a little bit less over the edge of the anvil. Right, so we're going to put the eyes in. And they start off pretty close together. So use the centre punch. Um, I'm Again, I'm guessing where they're going to go. And I think they could have gone a little bit higher up, but they want to be pretty close together. And then sink them in with the centre punch until it's big enough to get your round punch in. And you want to be pushing out and up slightly. And that should be big enough to get my punch in now. see how much it moves the head about. Now I'm using this bit of angle iron in the vise to support the back of the head because um, originally I followed the instructions on Thack's video and he just put it in the vise and it worked perfectly but it leaves some really nasty bites in the back of the skull from the jaws. So I'm just experimenting with this tool just to see if it does away with that so I haven't got to uh, tidy the back of the, the skull up afterwards I'm just going to keep pushing up and out and you can see it's deforming nicely to make the eye sockets watching this back on the video it's you can see how stuff moves much better oh my lights just gone out my studio light must be flat um, yes yeah, so you can see better on the video watching back how stuff moves you can see there that's pushed out nicely So now we're going to start with the nose. Again, centre punch. Start off with a centre punch. Quite low. Go in straight. And then quite quickly start pushing upwards. And that's going to push the bridge of the nose up. It's also going to distort the eyes, but don't worry about that because they will be saved later. Centre punch is a little bit big for this, I think, but now this is my flat sort of sculpting tool. I'm just straightening out the bridge of the nose, which in turn is sort of pushing the eyes back to where they came from. But they're still going to be a bit um, out of shape, but don't worry. 
we can sort that out. It's difficult to, to actually get the camera into film this properly. I really need to be further over to the left, but I can't get there because the camera's there. But so I'm having to do things all a little bit cack handed. So you can reshape the eye sockets quite easily. See the nose is coming on. So now I'm going to push the cheeks up and back. So literally sort of where the neck or jaw is going to be, or the jaw is below, just below the nose. Just pushing that back and up. I'm actually going to make myself a different sculpting tool. This one's a little bit narrow. I think I need something a little bit wider. This is only about 3 sixteenths at the bottom. I think I could have done with one at least quarter, maybe 5 sixteenths. Um, so you, you sort of are sculpting more in one blow because you are, although it's got rounded corners, you are getting sort of lines in it. So that will be on the agenda for the next skull make. This coal or coke is so filthy, leaving bits all over the place. Right, so now we're going to work again on the eyes. Don't let, every time you do something to one part, it distorts another part, which you can easily correct, but don't leave it too long before you correct it. Correct it, then do the another bit, then correct it again, do another bit. Because if you leave it too long, uh, you will find it very difficult to put right. So it's like do a little bit, put it right, do a little bit, put it right. Now I'm just trying to decide what I'm doing now. I don't really know what I'm up to. Just a bit more sculpting around the nose. You don't need to spend an awful lot of time on this. As I say, this is only the second one I've ever done, so it's I'm still learning. But I'm guessing that once you've done this a dozen times you'll have it down pat and you know you won't need to be all this doing all this messing about and I'm purposely doing this not getting these too hot because it's difficult to see when it's really hot the camera doesn't like it much but uh, working at this temperature anyway this black heat is, is quite good you can do quite a lot of sculpting with it at this temperature and you can actually see what you're doing much better and you don't burn your hands so much so it's not a bad thing doing it at a black heat but trust me this is still bloody hot now I'm going to while I remember try and just put in a bit of a brow now as Thack says on his tutorial skulls don't have a brow but it just adds to the menace what people like to see it just makes them look a little bit meaner there we go, we're getting there so now we're going to go in with this brow just a little bit more you can just see it's just pushing in, in in at the back of the top of the eyes which just causes that little lump to look like a, an eyebrow sort of and it defines the socket a little bit more and you can knock the rest of it back down so you haven't got a line so you're sort of knocking the skull back into itself again if I had a bigger 
sculpting tool, a wider one. It'd be much easier to, to um, blend the line back in. So that's definitely on the cards for the next job. Make a bigger one, a wider one. And this doesn't have to be hard steel, the, the uh, your blending tool. This I think I've, I'm using is an old uh, um, Allen key, but I, I dare say a bit of uh, mild steel would do for when it's hot. So there we go, we're getting there. We're going to go in with the mouth now. This is where the chisel comes in. Oops, kick the camera. And again, I'm just sort of guessing where it's going to go and going in straight, straight at 90 degrees. And once it's marked, then start pushing it upwards. And that will sort of, oh, kick the camera again. That sort of brings the, the teeth, or what will be the teeth, sort of forward and out a bit by pushing them up. It's just getting a little bit more um, shape into it so it's not all just still a flat bit of iron. You can see there just about that it's, it's just sort of curled the front up a little bit. Now I'm going to go in with my specially made chisel, the little tiny one. You don't have to have a little tiny one. I made this out of a, a, a small piece of spring steel um, just because I've got loads of it kicking about and it's you know useful to have if you're going to do a lot of these. Um, you can get away with it with a bigger chisel but making one tooth size is just that little bit easier. You don't need to put an awful lot of um, detail into one of these this small. Um, if you're going to do a big one then you can put loads more detail in but this being this small doesn't really warrant it. Although I am going to try with this tiny little chisel. It just put some little V's across the top of the teeth just to define them. I'm just going to try and use the corner of the chisel and it's working quite well but it's difficult to hold my hand still I've got the shakes it seems to be working it's just another little bit of detail We're almost there. It's just about it. So what I'm going to do, I'll give it a good proper wire brush up and we'll have a quick look at it. Because I think that's going to call that a day. So, here it is. It's not brilliant. The head's too tall. The jaw's too narrow. But I don't think you would mistake what it is. I'm quite pleased with it for my second attempt. I will try something slightly different on my third attempt. But there you go. I think you can quite easily see that that's a skull. If that was a little bit shorter. And then you cut this off down there somewhere. That's definitely a skull. So thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.